Hi everybody, you got the basics of the four main efficiencies from my previous video, but in this video we're going to go uber detailed, and when it comes to writing an essay, for you guys to rock the essay and get big marks, how do you actually analyse what happens when these efficiencies take place, why are they good for consumers, why are they good for producers, we are going to understand all of that in this video. Let's go through the efficiencies one by one, we'll recover uh, the definition of them and where they occur on a business diagram um, and then we'll go into in-depth analysis in terms of the consumer and then the producer as well. Let's look at allocative efficiency first. What is the definition of allocative efficiency? It occurs where demand equals supply in a market and that is absolutely true for a business as well where demand equals supply and at that point society surplus is being maximized the sum of producer and consumer surplus we can't do any better than that in economics when it comes to allocating scarce resources than maximizing both consumer and producer surplus. That is allocative efficiency. That occurs where demand equals supply. And on a business diagram, that is where price equals marginal cost. Price is equal to average revenue, which is equal to demand. And marginal cost is our supply curve. So it is where demand equals supply. But on a business diagram, we can be more formal and say where price equals marginal cost. What does it mean for the consumer if a business is being allocatively efficient? Well, it means that resources are following consumer demand. Consumers are getting exactly what they want in exactly the quantity that they want it in as well. Consumers are getting low prices, which means that there is a maximization of consumer surplus. Very good for consumers. Consumers are getting high choice, so the quantity in the market is, is high, exactly what consumers desire. So high choice and high quality of production as well. Competitive outcomes implies that quality has to be high for firms to stay ahead of their rivals. So these are all great things for the consumer, which you can really analyze in a nice paragraph. For the producer, why is it good for them to be allocatively efficient? Well, because it's a way for them to retain their market share or to increase their market share and to stay ahead of their rivals who maybe aren't doing all of these things perfectly. It also means that they can increase their profit by bringing more consumers to them as a result of doing all of these things as well. So producers can like being allocatively efficient. Productive efficiency, what's the definition of that? Well, being hyper-technical, it's the maximization of output at the lowest possible average cost. What you should add on to this definition is that it is the full exploitation of economies of scale, maximum output at the lowest possible average cost full exploitation of economies of scale. Add that on to the end as well. Where does that occur? Well, as we learned from the last video, at the lowest point of average cost, you might want to say where marginal cost equals average cost. That's always going to be the minimum point of average cost. So why is productive efficiency good for a consumer? Well, if the lower average costs are passed on to consumers, consumers may get lower prices, which is great. That means higher consumer surplus. And that comes because of the full exploitation of economies of scale and firms operating at the minimum point on their average cost. That could be great if transferred to consumers via lower prices. Why is it good for producers? Well, of course, it means more production and at lower costs. That's great because that can translate into higher profits. And it's good because if they do pass on the lower costs via lower prices to consumers, it means, again, they can stay ahead of their rivals, they can retain or increase their market share, which is good for the long-term position in the industry. What about dynamic efficiency? Well, the definition of dynamic efficiency is reinvesting super normal profit into innovation, into R&D, that should say, not R&D, R&D, research and development, and into new technology. The idea is to lower long-run average costs over time. What's the condition for this to take place? It's super normal profit needed in the long run. So long run existence of super normal profit can allow for dynamic efficiency to take place. That's important, as we learned in my last video. Why is this great for consumers? Well, obviously, through reinvestment, we get great, innovative, brand new products. Products we didn't even think could exist in the way that they exist, but do exist. Fantastic news for consumers through this amazing innovation. Over time, we get lower prices. Why? Because of new technology. New production techniques come in. New machinery exists, which can lower average costs for the producer and then that can be transferred to consumers via lower prices over time. And over time, if there are new innovative new products, 
then uh, new producers might enter the market, we see greater competition and that can drive prices down as well. All great news for the consumer in the long run, which can then increase consumer surplus for the consumer. Why do businesses like being dynamically efficient? Well, loads of reasons why. It allows for long-run profit maximization by continually looking to innovate, by continually spending on research and development. You can stay ahead of rivals, you can keep high profits by coming up with brand new products and keep up your price-making ability. Lower costs over time, great news for the business, right? It improves efficiency over time, lowers costs over time, which allows them to keep prices low, which allows them to increase profits over time. And as we've said already, to retain or increase market share, dynamic efficiency might be very important as a way to get ahead of competition, as a way to beat them, as a way maybe to gain patents, copyrights or licenses, which prevents competition copying you and allows you to get ahead of rivals, of course, to create monopoly power and to really boost profits. So big incentives for companies to be dynamically efficient. That's why we see lots of it in the real world. X efficiency, well the definition of that is production with no waste. So no excess cost above average cost is the definition of X efficiency. The condition is that production takes place on any point on the average cost curve. So whatever quantity a firm is producing, that quantity should be produced at the average cost line, on the average cost curve. No point above that, that would be wasteful. Why is that good for consumers? Well, obviously, if costs are being minimised at whatever production point, it means that consumers may get lower prices if those lower costs are passed on to consumers, and that means higher consumer surplus. For the producer, why is it good? Well, it means lower costs, therefore higher profit, which is good for them, and it means they can pass on lower prices to the consumer to increase or retain their market share, to stay ahead of their rivals. So this is the detailed analysis you need to add on to what we covered in my last video, which were just these two rows here. By doing so in an essay, you are going to be amazing. And let me tell you, in lots of uh, business-related essays, market structure-related essays, these are going to be massive points. This is going to be really the foundation of your essay, of what your arguments are underpinned by. So by being able not just to identify what the efficiency is and where it occurs on a diagram, but by being able to analyse, you're going to look so much better than other students who don't do this. So really rock your essay now by going into this. Remember, just a little addition, that allocative, productive and X efficiency is static efficiency because they take place at one given production point, as we've seen here. These are very specific production points, whereas dynamic efficiency takes place over time. It is not a static efficiency. All right. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Hopefully this very much is the pathway to an A star or at worst an A grade for you. All the best when it comes to writing essays. Hope you smash it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.